So chances are by this point, all of the people on that submarine that sank trying to reach the Titanic are dead from running out of oxygen, if not from having the entire sub implode like an aluminum can. At least that's the story that literally every news outlet is running with. But you know our policy. If the entire media is in alignment on something, then there's probably something hidden. What if all of this is actually a ploy to keep people from visiting the Titanic wreckage? But if that's the goal, why? Maybe because if people explore the Titanic too much, they would discover that it wasn't an iceberg that sank the Titanic. There's a lot of alternative theories about how that sinking occurred. That it was intentionally sunk as part of an elaborate insurance scam, and even if that it was sunk by a newly created Federal Reserve. Zach Voorhees is a reliable software engineer who turned whistleblower from inside of Google. He's been exploring all of this. He had a long Twitter thread about it, and he joins us now. Zach, thank you so much for coming. We appreciate you being here. Stu, it's a pleasure to be on your show. Thank you for having me back. Yeah, so for all of the people who have not seen your Twitter thread, please explain what you think is actually going on with this submarine Titanic exploration event. Well, Stu, as you said, when the media decides altogether that something is very important, then that means they're usually trying to push something. Yeah, safe and effective. Go get your booster. Exactly. So um, the thing about this uh, submarine, which is really weird, is that it was actually funded by uh, the Rothschild dynasty. Mm. And what's also really interesting is that um, there is a new treaty that's getting implemented that uh, makes it so that citizens of uh, the Western countries like the United States, Canada, UK, uh, can't go visit there without a permit. And that's actually already taken effect. And so the question is, why did this sub which has all these different problems, an uncertified experimental design being run by a wireless controller and someone without submarine experience of any significant degree. Why was this allowed and permitted to go down and visit this? Well, my belief is that they're going to use this as justification to prevent anyone from going down there and visiting that Titanic. Why? Because the narrative for so long has been that the iceberg blew through one inch of steel and cut through the hole of the Titanic, causing it to sink. Now, we all know that jet fuel can't melt steel beams, but what we should also kind of adopt is the fact that an iceberg can't cut through hardened steel. They made this Titanic unsinkable, and back then they knew what they were doing. And this hilarious narrative that uh, lukewarm ice, right? Because that, that's essentially what it is at 32 degrees could cut through hardened steel is absolutely ridiculous. And so I believe that if people go down there, what they're going to find is that there isn't an implosion in the hole due to an iceberg. What they're going to find is that there is a outward buckling of the hole because explosives were placed on the Titanic to blow it out. Yeah, that's not a conspiracy theory either. There's a signed statement by a committee of the surviving passengers that was given to the press, which states that the Titanic carried 2,340 persons on board consisting of 1,400 passengers, 940 officers and crew. No sign of panic was manifested until just before the vessel sank when loud shouts of terror were heard and the sound of persons plunging overboard. There was reports of explosions from eyewitnesses. Quote, Ice was all around us, crunching against the boats as we rowed away. We saw there was not enough boats for everyone, but there was plenty of time to save everyone if the Titanic had been sufficiently provided. The weather was beautifully calm, and except for the ice, it would have been like a lake in summer. We saw the Titanic struggling slowly forward as we rowed away. There was no sign of any panic until just before she sank. Then we heard what seemed like shouts of terror, and it appeared to us in the semi-darkness, as if human shapes were plunging overboard. We heard a dull sound, which may have been the boilers exploding. Yeah, exactly. And so the the question is, why would they sink the Titanic? Uh, And the answer to that is that four members, uh, four rich families uh, were on that Titanic that were all opposed to the Federal Reserve. So that's John Jacob Astor IV, Benjamin Gutenheim, uh, Isidore Strauss, and George Dunton, uh, Wendine. And they all perished on this vessel. In fact, in the movie Titanic, there's a very short scene, about three seconds, where they have a bunch of people uh, in the Titanic discussing uh, and opposing the Federal Reserve, but it's just three seconds and it continues to move on. Um, it's it's the belief of a lot of people who piece this together that those were the actual targets because shortly after the Titanic sank, the Federal Reserve was instituted. 
And so uh, who is the beneficiaries of this? The stockholders of the Federal Reserve. Uh, why would this you know, thing be funded? Well, it's being funded by the Rothschild dynasty, right? What they want to do is that they want to prevent people from visiting this Titanic. That's the reason why the media is pushing this. And what we're going to see after this disaster is over is we're going to see heat on the regulatory bodies that are responsible for uh, issuing permits for people to go to Titanic. And what they want to do is they want to cover this up. They don't want people to go down there. And what they're going to do in the meantime is give us limited disclosures. The Smithsonian came out recently and said in 2017 that a coal fire that was burning uncontrollably and undetected for two weeks prior may have contributed to this, you know, um, uh, sh ship sinking. And so it's my belief that they're slowly rolling it out in a limited disclosure to admit that there actually might have been other contributing factors to this. But I don't think they're actually going to come out and admit that the entire thing was a piece of sabotage in order to Trojan horse in the Federal Reserve System that we now have in place. Yeah, as you alluded to, in 1910, some of America's most influential bankers gathered on Jekyll Island to plan the country's monetary policy and establish a central banking system, by the way, which Putin kicked out of Russia, which resulted in the draft legislation for the creation of the Federal Reserve Act. J.P. Morgan, the financier and banker who funded and built the Titanic, was booked on its maiden voyage in 1912, but canceled at the last minute. That's a little strange. Unlike the most wealthy and influential opponents to the creation of the Federal Reserve Act, American millionaires who did not owe their fortunes to banking, who remained on that ship and all perished. According to one theory, J.P. Morgan killed off any potential threats by ensuring rival millionaires Jacob Astor, who you mentioned, Isidore Strauss, and Benjamin Gutenheim, who all allegedly opposed the forming of a central bank, they all died on board the Titanic. Uh, none of this can be viewed as coincidental. And the discouragement to go and visit the Titanic is reminiscent of the discouragement or actually the abolition and criminal act that it would be if you went and tried to explore, oh, I don't know, Antarctica. Right, exactly. So, you know, not everyone is under this treaty. Um, you know, this is the Western world. Russia can still visit it. Uh, China can still visit it. And it's in international waters. So, you know, this international treaty doesn't apply to them, but it definitely does apply to you. And it does apply to me. So it looks like this uh, mystery will be continued to be buried at sea. Yeah. What about the submarine itself? Uh, the press is running with the story that, you know, these people can survive, can survive without oxygen for that long at a depth of, I don't know, 12,000 feet. They're bolted in from the outside. Now I'm reading stories about how this thing has claws on it that can help to free it if it gets caught up in some cables or if it gets down the coast guard is saying no this is not a recovery mission this is still a search and rescue mission how long can one survive without oxygen in a tuna can at twelve thousand feet in immense pressure below the surface of the ocean yeah they're done they're done they're perished uh that that's my belief um the thing is is that at 5,000 feet, you're under incredible pressure. I mean, it's way more pressure under 5,000 feet of ocean than, let's say, the space station. I don't know. Uh, Tell that to Damar Hamlin. I mean, apparently right? you can be brought back to life after 26 minutes of resuscitation on a football field. Uh, apparently you can survive two heart attacks, be brought back to life. And according to BBC, death is irreversible, so you can't revive people. But somehow, right. here's but Damar Hamlin, who's been, by the way, at least the guy pretending to be Damar Hamlin, has been cleared to play NFL football. That should be an interesting and upcoming season. Uh, as, as more develops on this Titanic thing, I'm sure that you'll be all over it. Make sure to visit Zach on Twitter. What's your handle on Twitter, Zach? Uh, Twitter.com slash Perpetual Maniac, or just search for my name, Zach Voorhees, the Google whistleblower. Brilliant thread. Uh, and I applaud you for questioning literally everything that this satanic vanguard Pfizer, BlackRock, Rothschild funded media says. It's yep. interesting how uh, the biggest financiers of this criminal press are actually also the ones that are behind this submarine. So if you believe right. the narrative, uh, I've got some land that I'd like to sell you in a lot of different places and bridges. Zach Voorhees, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. Thank you, Stu. Everybody now knows that we live in an upside down clown world under an empire of lies, a murderous regime. So previously it may have sounded crazy, but I'm sure you won't be surprised to learn that liberals are very upset that people like me are advertising the Vanish holster. They cannot stand how this holster has helped get more Americans armed than ever before. What's so special about this Vanish holster, you might ask? Well, simple. It is the most comfortable holster ever. 
the most comfortable holster I've ever worn. I have plenty of experience, 15 years in bounty hunting, lots of experience with holsters and firearms. And when you get a Vanish holster, you'll never stop carrying because you'll forget you're even wearing it. Plus, the Vanish holster saves you money. That's because it fits 99% of all semi-auto handguns. It works without a tactical belt. It lets you carry in multiple positions. It carries two fully loaded magazines. And best of all, because you're a viewer of this program, you get it for 50 bucks off. I am told that this discount is set to expire soon, so kick in your special pricing. Lock it in right now. Go to Vanish.com slash stew. That's V-N-S-H dot com slash stew. V-N-S-H dot com slash stew. It's all back for the money back guarantee, and I believe them when they say it's the only holster that you'll ever need because it's the last one that you'll ever buy. Vanish.com slash stew right now, today before this discount expires.